Space and lotter correlation is a fundamental concept in geographic data science. In many ways, is the main reason for the field to exist. And it's this idea that where lo- things happen has a role to play in explaining why they happen and why they are the way they are. So let's jump on the slides to explore a little bit more what exactly is spatial autocorrelation, where it comes from, and what types of spatial autocorrelation we can observe. To start understanding spatial autocorrelation, I usually find it useful to go back all the way to the early 1970s, where the famous geographer Waldo Tobler once said, everything's related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. And this, which has later become known as the first law of geography, encapsulates really the idea that geography matters, that where things are located has a role to play in explaining why they are the way they are. And looking at it collectively, where things are located gives rise to general patterns that we can then measure and try to use to understand better the processes that generate those patterns. Now, this you might have picked up. It's a beautiful way of stating the role of geography, but it's also a fairly abstract way of capturing this notion. And from this statement, it's really hard to see how we can do anything with data. However, this is where spatial autocorrelation comes in. The idea of spatial autocorrelation is to take the notions of the first law of geography and translate them into something that we can then use more practically. And you can apply, you can approach spatial autocorrelation from two points of view. One is coming from geography, and from this perspective, is really a statistical representation of Tobler's law. It's a way of formalizing this notion that everything is connected to everything else, but near things more so than others. Or you can also come back, come to it from the other end, which is from the statistical perspective. And in this, from this point of view, spatial autocorrelation is the spatial counterpart or is the geographical uh, sister, if you want, of traditional correlation. If you've ever taken a statistic, statistics course, the notion of correlation is at the very heart of what makes statistics relevant. So spatial autocorrelation augments this notion into um, the geographical scene. So now that we know where it comes from, let's define it uh, full front. And spatial autocorrelation in this context can be defined as the degree to which similar values are located in similar locations. So in other words, spatial autocorrelation is a way of connecting similarity in statistical space with similarity in geographical space. See how we could approach this from two points of view, geography or statistics. Spatial autocorrelation sits at the, mid- at the middle, connecting the two. And same as non-spatial autocorrelation, spatial autocorrelation can have two flavors. We can have positive spatial autocorrelation in which similar values are associated with similar locations. In other words, similar observations tend to be located nearby each other. Or we can have um, negative spatial autocorrelation in which similar values tend to be further apart from each other. A couple of examples of both positive and negative spatial autocorrelation include the following. For example, for positive spatial autocorrelation, almost any phenomena in social science will most likely follow a pattern of spatial autocorrelation when you plot it on a map. Things like income, things like poverty, but not only social science going beyond Things like vegetation, usually you tend to find similar species located in similar parts of the geography. Even temperature is spatially correlated. The temperature of where you are tells you quite a bit about the temperature of a nearby location in that it probably is similar. This is because there's a positive pattern of spatial autocorrelation underlying the distribution of temperature. 
negative space allotta correlation is not as common as positive, but it's also present in the world. And in most cases, it's present when there are processes of spatial competition, what we would call, or economists would call, spatial competition. That is processes by which agents or observations compete for either resources or access to um, certain, certain inputs. For example, supermarkets is a good um, is a good example. Very rarely will you see two Tesco's right next to each other, because the idea of locating a supermarket is trying to cover as much of possible as much as possible of the geography with a single location, and hence supermarkets tend to be located spaced out so they can be uh, covering a larger part of geography without stepping on each other's toes, so to speak. Police stations is the, is a similar process, in, except that instead of being an economic um, motivation, there's a motivation for rationalization of the resources. The idea that engineers that locate police stations or fire stations, for that matter, try to follow is how much coverage can they get with the minimum number of stations. Placing stations is expensive, so the idea is how can we cover as many of them, as much space with as little of them as possible. Hospitals is a very similar case. Now that we know that there are two flavors of space allotta correlation, positive and negative, there's also two scales at which we can look at space allotta correlation. The notion of scale is very, very fundamental to geography. In many ways, geography, looking at the world through a geographical lens, is looking at the world through the lens of a hierarchy of scales, is looking at the world at different levels and at different degrees of granularity and definition. And this idea also translates into how we understand space allotta correlation. So when we talk about scales of space allotta correlation, we talk about two, global space allotta correlation, and local space a lot of correlation. Global is about this word, clustering, is about whether we can characterize patterns overall. It's a summary way of looking at, at the world, and it's a way of summarizing an entire map with a view into whether it's overall clustered or not. But it, it's, it's looking at the process of clustering, whether as a general trend, we can tell there is clustering of values, whether similar values tend to be located in similar locations or not. In contrast, we can also do local space allotta correlation. We can look at space allotta correlation through a local lens. And in this case, what we're looking at is clusters, not clustering, but clusters. In other words, pockets in the map, within a given map, not an overall trend, but specific pockets where values are unusually um, clustered, either as similar values coming together or dissimilar values coming together. Both are possible. So it's important to note that the notion of scale is very much compatible with the flavors of space allotta correlation. And in fact, the two give rise to four types of space allotta correlation. You can have global positive, global negative, or local positive and local negative. And we will see these in more detail in subsequent videos.